for joining us for the Henry Ford College Board of Trustees meeting. It is the first day of spring, March 20th, and we are getting started at about 7.05. Could I please get a uh, roll call? Trustee Barry? Here. Trustee D'Ambrosio? Here. Trustee McDonald? Here. Trustee Mosep? Here. Trustee Petrikoff? Here. Trustee Watts? Here. Chair Thorpe? Here. Next item. <laughs> approval of minutes. Approval of minutes for the following Board of Trustees meeting. Regular Board of Trustees meeting. February 20th, 2023. Recommended action. Make any necessary corrections and move to approve these minutes. So move. Support. We have a motion by Trustee D'Ambrosio. Support by Trustee Barry. Are there any corrections that we need to note in the minutes? Hearing none, may I attach a unanimous roll? All right, so be it. Next item. Recognition, recognition and acknowledgments. Thank you, President Cavaluna, Chair Thorpe, and members of the Henry Ford College Board of Trustees. My name is Dia Kamara. I am a 2020 graduate of International Academy Oakma High School in Bloomfield Hills. I will graduate from HSC in May 2023, having completed the requirements for a biology associates and science degree. Entering college during the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, I came to HSC to pursue a STEM undergraduate degree. My professional goals include obtaining my medical degree and becoming the first physician in my family, specifically an oral maxillofacial surgeon. HSC is where I've made strides towards my goal not only academically, but through clubs and activities on campus, which I have led and participated in. I have thoroughly enjoyed my HSC experience. I currently hold the position of Vice Chair of the HSC Student Council. I'm also President of the Animation, Comic, and Gaming Club. Additionally, I am a member of the National Society of Leadership and Success and the Black Male and Queens Focus Group. Because of the knowledge and experience I've cultivated at HSC, I am proud to say that I have been accepted into many of my top choices for four-year higher education institutions, including the University of Michigan, Ann Arbor, Michigan State University, Wayne State University, and Oakland University. I am currently deciding which university I will attend this fall. I am immensely grateful for the memories I have and will continue to make at HSC until graduation and for the mentors and friends who have motivated and inspired me to keep making progress towards my goals. Now, I am pleased to read this month's HSC Board Acknowledgements. The 38th Annual Land Conference Student Competitions and Exhibition was held on February 23rd and 24th. Congratulations to the following students who participated in this event. Graphic Design, Christopher Nampst, first place in publication award, Graphic Design, Illustration, Digital Media, Land Program Cover, titled Awkward Pauses. Jason Donati, second place. Graphic Design, Illustration, Digital Media, Land Program Cover, titled Awkward Pauses. Nathan Abbott, third place. Graphic Design, Illustration, Digital Media, Land Program Cover, titled Awkward Pauses. Madison Farley, Honorable Mention, Graphic Design, Illustration, Digital Media, Land Program Cover, titled Awkward Pauses. 2D Art, Malak Cherry, <clears throat> second place, 2D Oil Paint titled Sunkiss Recitation. Fiction, Georgia Wren Beattie, first place, Creative Writing Contest titled Worms. Creative Nonfiction, Ashley Trent, third prize, Creative Writing Contest titled Landmines. Land, Student Scholars. Zaina Bazon, titled Public Transportation in Detroit. Walla Bazon, titled Detroit, the Asthma Endemic. Joel Farrick, titled Keep Growing Detroit, a story of Detroit's adversity. Sean Milan, titled Blood Libel, from Thomas of Monmouth to Henry Ford. Congratulations to the following HSC News staff for their awards at this year's MPA Better Newspaper Contest. First place in the Division Three Editorial Category to Arlana Kane Harris for Remembering Dr. Daher. First place in the Division Three Non Front Page Design Category to Kiana Freeman for The B New Black Vanguard Photography Between Art and Fashion. 
Second place in the Division Three Investigative Reporting category to Molly Mullen to, for Local Animal Shelters Face Serious Crisis. Second place in the Division Three Sports News Features category to Lillian Grantham for Athletic Training is Concerned for Some Athletes. Second place in the Division Three Best Writer category to Tyler Stewart for Squid Game Shows Audiences Want More Diverse Asian Representation. Natural Organic Reduction, Taking a Dirt Nap for the Planet, and Artfully Remaking Horror, Surprisa is a Dance Worth Watching Twice. Third place in the Vision 3 Best Writer category to Linian Grantham for Look Up Reflects Current Social Divides, Detroit Zoo First Female Director Shares Summer Plans, and From Burundi to Baobab Fair, <coughs> Restaurant Owner Shares His Journey to Detroit. Honorable mention in the Division Three Sports News Features Category Two, Zainab Al Tami, for Hawks Men Basketball Rebounds After Rough Start. Honorable mention in the Division Three Column Review or Blog Sports Category to Lillian Grantham for Hawks Softball Looks to Draw on Championship Season. Honorable mention in the Division Three Editorial Category to Anthony Stone for The Power of Networking. The Hawks men basketball team won the MCCAA Eastern Conference and followed up by winning the MCCAA championship on March 5th. The team completed conference play with an impressive 15-0. The men's basketball team won the Great Lakes District B men's basketball championship on March 12th, earning a berth to the NJCAA Division II National Championship in Danville, Illinois. The Hawks tip off as the number three seed tomorrow at 11 a.m. Central versus Arkansas State University Mid-South. Good luck to the Hawks. Congratulations to head men's basketball coach Chris Shepard for being named Great Lakes District Coach of the Year. Congratulations to Juwan Seal for being named Great Lakes District Tournament Most Valuable Player. Also, congratulations to Tyler Mack and DeQuarion Cole for being named on the all-tournament team. The HSC Roller Hockey Club has received an invitation to participate in the National Collegiate Roller Hockey Association National Championship to be held April 19th to the 24th at the Rinks Irvine in Irvine, California. The Hawks are the only community college team competing in the National Collegiate Roller Hockey Association and are seated six in the nation. Now, I would like to introduce head wrestling coach Grant McKenzie with an additional athletics announcement. Okay. Thank you again. Uh, I, my goal, I love March. March is my favorite month for multiple reasons. All the basketball going on, our own college team is doing great. The wrestlers did fantastic. And my goal is to always be here every March to say hello and introduce you to our young men, okay? Xavier, raise your hand. Xavier Burns from Wyandotte. He just finished his freshman year. He was a national qualifier. This is Jagger Kwiatkowski, he's a sophomore, and he returned home an All-American, okay? He placed eighth in the country. <laughs> Say thank you. Yeah. Oh, thank you, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> they don't like to talk too much, but they're grateful for the opportunity. Um, Jagger has not committed anywhere next year. He's still thinking about things. He may stay around and take a few more classes. And Xavier is coming back with his younger brother. This poor man knows he's got to come back to the podium. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions for Dia? Trustee Watts? Remind me again, what do you want to do in the, in the university? What is you wanted to do what into dent, in, within dentistry? I want to become an oral maxillofacial surgeon. What does that mean? <laughs> so basically, um, imagine a plastic surgeon. Yes. And you know, plastic surgery is for cosmetic reasons, right? Imagine someone doing plastic surgery, but like for people who really need it due to the accidents and or um, uh, malformations of the face area and also like the bone <coughs> structure and jaw. So like restructuring of the face and uh, the topical features as well. How did you decide that? It's a very specific. It's very specific. Um, so I think it has to do with part of my interest in just like art. 
um, and the creativity of it. I think I like surgery, um, not just because like, oh, you're helping people, but because I, I think it's interesting. I, I have this like um, fascination with watching like surgery mm -hmm. happen, and it's definitely not easy to watch. It's definitely not easy to watch, but I think as I watch it and I see it happen, um, I'm like, wow, this is like meaningful. Like I can see like purpose out of this. Uh -huh. You know, this not, it's not difficult. I mean, okay, it's not easy. Oh my gosh, <laughs> make some words. It is by far incredibly difficult. Um, it is extremely demanding, extremely difficult. <laughs> um, but I, I like that, and I like just the outcome of it, um, and I like the process of it. And I think that's, I mean, that's what I want out of a career, right? Something that's uh, fulfilling, demanding, and I, I like, I just like doing it. And I, I like, the thing I'm up for the task, I think specifically oral maxillofacial surgery, it captures an artistry, and you could say a medicine in the fact that you have to recreate someone's face, which there's no like guidebook on how to do that word for word, you know? There's like things we can generally do that said the textbook says, but eventually it comes to your hands and it's like, how can we get this to look like this? And that's, you know, kind of like molding clay in a sense of way. Um, I think it's really fascinating. So. Well, thank you for sharing because you, the passion that you have for it came through in that explanation. So thank you. And um, I am biased, but go blue. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Un unless you ch choose your college based on who's doing best in the men's NCAA basketball <laughs> ranking. Or Big Ten hockey, I'm just saying. <laughs> Number two uh, Additional questions? I have a few. Go um, for it. Mr. Chairman, um, much of what Dia has told us today is not a surprise to me because I want to tell just a few anecdotes about uh, Dia because, um, you know, these students generally get some input in what they get to say about themselves, but in, in most instances, and, and in this instance, there are m more things to add, and I just want to add a few things about uh, Dia. The first is that the exchange that he had uh, with Trustee Watts was all uh, a second time I've heard that because uh, Dia, on his own volition, asked to sit with me. Was it before the pandemic? It's like right around the start of it. Yeah. 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 So Dia and I shared lunch here uh, in my office, and we had that exchange and more about what his passions were and what he was uh, trying to do with his with his life and why he was um, enjoying HFC, and then also gave me some feedback about some ways we can improve HFC. Um, and and then uh, it was probably just, was it just two or three months ago we ran into each other again? Um, and we've seen each other other times, but I saw him in the student center and uh, we, we just kind of ran into each other and he was telling me how he was thinking about applying to U of M Ann Arbor and he didn't think he was gonna get in and uh, could he please have a letter of recommendation from me? Which of course I said, absolutely, let me know. And I never heard anything from him. And then I saw him just uh, just last week when the lieutenant governor was here in this room, and uh, of course we had Dia as one of the students there because he's uh, so excellent in so many different regards, and and he didn't say anything about U of M. I thought oh, well, he must have either just not applied or maybe he didn't want a letter. And so I, we got to talking to him. I said, Dia, did, did you did you apply? And he got a big smile on his face, uh, and. You know, I just want to say, I didn't get a chance to say it to you as much as I wanted to in that setting, Dia, but I'm so proud of you. You didn't need my help at all. Um, and it's a real pleasure for us to have, at least me, and I know that these individuals share it, but they haven't had the chance to know you like I have. It's, it's just, it's, it's a real point of pride for us. We, your success makes us feel good. And um, I, I just want to say thank you for the effort, especially because you don't know this, but People, uh, students like you come up at every board meeting and have to read this list of things, but I've never seen our team give a person three pages of awards for other students to read. And I've never seen a student go through so many different names showing our diversity with no mispronunciations. Uh, I just, it just, you did a great job. And um, the last thing I'll say is, um, how are you doing? Are you, are you feeling excited about your future? Was it neat to see the Lieutenant Governor? What can you tell this board about what really worked well at HFC and what maybe they can improve on? Oh, wow. I think, um, I think one of the things that I think really has made me grounded at HFC, and it's funny because um, this is 
a couple hours after this club meeting that I'm the president of, I told you, the Animation, Comic, and Gaming Club. But we had a meeting at 2, and it lasted past, normally go 2 to 4, but we had a really good time, went till 6. And um, I guess that is a reflection of how much I really value the experiences I've been able to make through activities for HRC. I really think that is um, something that I wish more people could be informed about or be able to take um, you know, inclusion to because that is really what made it great. And I mentioned that club because I just you know, sent them a message. I'm like, oh, I love you guys so much. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much for making this club what it is. I'm so glad our small little group you know, grows bigger and bigger and I'm so glad of what we accomplished. Um, I wish more people could be a part of that. Um, what else? Another thing is that um, I, th I just, uh, I think the, the coming back from COVID into the physical, you know, realm, people are still a little unsure. And I, I just, I wish that people knew there's more ways to be connected because I think that's really what grounds people. I, I think my online experience paled in comparison to being here in person. And so um, I guess as a transfer student, the things that affect me as of right now, uh, it would be trying to figure out how, not just where I'm going to transfer, but how I'm going to pay for it. <laughs> um, that's something that has come up multiple times. I'm exploring many different options. I think even it, military has come up. Um, you know, I'm not sure how things are going to go, but I know I'm going to college. I know I'm going to go on. I guess I would ask the board if there's any suggestions or resources they have to scholarships. Um, I would. I would be glad to hear and deeply appreciate it because I'm my parents you know we're a three-person team me and my um, what nine month old baby sister as well um, so four person team trying to work on uh, just you know having things set and um, I think that's another thing everybody really needs you need you need people on your side especially in a home so I'm, I've really everywhere I've gone I have nothing but just everlasting love and gratitude for my mother and my father so you know um, that's really what's helped me just go for it. Uh, yeah. Well, you've got our support. Uh, you, you know my how to contact me. You've done that uh, many times, and um, we're very proud of you. So let me know how I can help you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next item, please. <clears throat> Next item, President's items. Thank you, Trustee Watts. Trustees, good to see you again. Happy spring. And I have several, what I would say are described as updates and announcements. These will not be in depth, but I'll, I'll burn through all of them and then pause for questions because I do think I can get them get through them pretty quickly. And they span the, the gamut of highs and lows. And unfortunately, it's my obligation to say some things that are a little difficult to talk about and a little difficult to, to, to deal with. The first is, um, we had to uh, we had to say goodbye to one of our teammates named um, Nathaniel Edwards. I knew him as Nate. Some of you might have known Nate, and I'll pass this around to you, trustees. Um, he was uh, a member of our team here for more than a decade, and uh, much of his time was keeping the mechanical operations of the buildings of this campus uh, operating. And he, I saw him a lot in this building. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, what what Nate was remembered by, at least by me, and, and when I attended his uh, funeral. He was a, a gentle person in the way he looked and the way he acted, but he had a smile, a warm smile. And if you, if you ran into Nate, you would remember him. The, the smile was kind of um, a staple of the way he carried himself. And I, uh, I, it, as is always the case, it's a difficult occasion to see my teammates at a funeral and to interact with Nate's um, aunt and his niece. And uh, he will be missed by his family and he'll be missed by uh, his teammates here at Henry Ford College. Um, not as sad and difficult, but not good. Um, we, we had to say goodbye to a teammate who is moving across the street to the University of Michigan Dearborn. Her name is Mandy Earl, and we had a nice um, celebration of her time here at Henry Ford College in this room uh, just a little while ago. And she'll be moving to uh, a similar role to what she had here. And for those of you who have um, heard us and, and me and you raise uh, money and or uh, food for the hawk's nest right over here. That was all the work that Mandy Earl did. And when the pandemic hit and um, we were moving food out to the curb there, uh, Mandy was right shoulder to shoulder with me there. Uh, she, of course, works in Vice President Holly Diamond's area. 
and uh, she definitely will be missed. It was a great teammate, and I told her she's always welcome to come back once she realizes that we're on the better side of the berm. Um, <laughs> but if she wants to stay there, um, uh, she, she, her husband is the athletic director there, so I think it, it may have some synergies. Um, transitioning now a little bit out of to the kind of the things that are more difficult to talk about, the things that are exciting is spring break. Uh, we just got through spring break at Henry Ford College. And as you probably know, spring brings on at least one birthday in our, our board. The, the gentleman to my right, as you look at us to, 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 your, to the left of me, uh, is celebrated a birthday on March 1st. And, and I, I think he was probably in his mid-20s, maybe early 30s. Uh, <laughs> um, so happy birthday, Trustee Barry. Uh, right after his birthday, we had a nice celebration for the International Women's Day luncheon that was put on by the Detroit Regional Chamber. And I was happy to... Uh, to, to be a stark minority as the as I think there were two or three men in the room of 300 women and we had some powerful women leaders that joined me from Henry Ford College uh, we had uh, Trusty McDonald and Trusty Watts and Vice President DeLong and Vice President Diamond and it was a nice event there at the Henry Ford Museum I appreciate uh, those powerful women leaders joining me for lunch <clears throat> you also know a powerful woman leader that is Kathy Dimitriou, who is responsible for the pictures that are starting to grow again. Uh, if you walk out this hallway, you're going to see what I call the team picture of the Board of Trustees. <clears throat> and we started to show the, the several previous years of pictures for the Board of Trustees. And I invite you to take a look at that. Um, we also have uh, photographs on the wall there that are starting to commemorate some of the great work, particularly that um, Michael Nealon has, has, has done to uh, really draw tight connections to transfer institutions. On the right there you see that the group that celebrated the transfer agreement with Wayne State University and in the front of that are three HFC students. Dia, all, uh, two of those students stood before us just like you did so uh, they're blazing a trail uh, there for you also and then of course there's the president of Wayne State, uh, Roy Wilson. Right under the left uh, is the same thing with Chancellor Grasso of U of M Dearborn and we, we do have another picture that have um, the, 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 the folks that were there, and I, I was remiss for not pointing out, I see Trustee Pelichkoff there on the far right, Trustee Barry on the far right, and then Trustee Watts um, there. And I think I see, is that Vice President Best there also? Um, we, and we have the same type of photograph at U of M Dearborn, but um, it was a really, really good picture, just kind of like this in a, on a stage, and there was someone left the Kleenex on the floor. And it was like the, <laughs> this bright Kleenex on the dark floor. So we're waiting for that one to come, um, and I, I hope you enjoy these like I do. They are, they're symbolic of uh, where we've come and where we're going as an institution, and they just simply wouldn't happen without Kathy Dimitriou um, tirelessly <laughs> ordering and letting me pick at them and reorder. And hanging. Uh, hanging. And hanging, hanging, okay. yes. A um, uh, couple more things and then I'll be done. Uh, last week we were proud to host the Lieutenant Governor right here in this room. We had a, a series of students who were having a really great interaction with him. Dia was one of them, and the, the Lieutenant Governor said something that I, I, I know that you trustees will, uh, will find heartening. He said, because I said, I think this is your fourth time back here. And he said, yeah, I keep coming back because we support what you all are doing at Henry Ford College. And we had a very wonderful, diverse group of students from different backgrounds and different geographies and different interests. And they were able to tell, you know, the, the second uh, highest official in the executive branch of the state government what they thought. And, of course, they represented us so well. I know that's not a struggle for you to imagine that Dia would, but um, Dia was just one of, I think, 10 students who all did that. So it was a real pride point for us here. And I want to thank... Um, Rhonda DeLong for pulling that off seamlessly as she always does, including putting um, the new swag you have on your uh, table here. Um, and, uh, Rhonda, I know one's a pin, but are these stickers? Sticker or coaster. Sticker or coaster. <laughs> All right. I'm going to give mine to, to Dia. Um, this is a coaster for only water or juice. Um, uh, I know when you go to university, that's not serve you anything other than that. Um, but uh, the last two things I'll say is uh, uh, my wife and I enjoyed the Rotary Gala that uh, some of you on this board are members of the Rotary Gala, and it was, a, it was a nice event. And, of course, I could talk about the men's basketball team, but we put poor Dia through listing every single, single thing they did, and that's a long list. Um, so I will just say that uh, I, I want to thank Holly Diamond, Vice President Holly Diamond, for organizing the email that you all saw, that is the, the options to watch the Henry Ford Hawks play this week. Um, those of you who were on the board with me at this time last year remember I make my pilgrimage when they go down to the national tournament in Danville and 
Um, yeah, I would prefer that they play in the afternoon, but this is the third year they've been there and they don't play in the afternoon. This is the third year that their first game is right after your board meeting. So uh, I'll be leaving at about 4.30 tomorrow morning to get into position to watch the morning's game. Um, but uh, I'll be cheering on for all of you trustees. And that is my report. I'll take any questions. Any questions for President Cavaluna? All right. Thank you very much. Next item. Discussion items, fiscal year 2024 tuition, board report 44, I'm sorry, 4687, uh, Vice President uh, Sikowski. Okay. Thank you, board members. Uh, good evening. Uh, this is always that time of year when we, when we take a look at what our tuition is, what we're recommending, what we're asking for you to, to consider for the coming year. And just to start off with, uh, I have a few uh, slides here that show uh, comparable information on, on some of our uh, colleagues and what they're considering, what we're considering, and, and where we stand in the tuition rankings for both for in-district, out-of-district, and out-of-state. This information I have here was the, the latest I had uh, up until last week. It showed some of the larger colleges, uh, Grand Rapids, what they're considering at, at the low end of, of a 1.7% increase. Uh, we're at the uh, 2.8, and that number is the number we use when, we, when I'll get further along through the sustainable budget and through negotiations that, that just concluded. Uh, it's quite interesting that uh, some of them uh, toward the bottom here, Mott, uh, North Central, Oakland, uh, Southwestern, uh, and Macomb, uh, hitting the 4% uh uh, category uh, in tuition increase and a number of them have already approved that so it was being comp, uh, considered and also uh, uh, approved for some of our, our, our colleagues uh, with that I wanted to give you an idea where we are where we ended up in fiscal year 2013 this this particular year the far right column identifies 1 through 28 the uh, co community colleges who had the highest in district tuition rate uh, Jackson and then who had the lowest uh, uh, which was Washtenaw the yellow line shows we our rate for 2023 this this current year so we we're at uh, $108 for uh, our in our in district rate uh, the blue line shows where we would be if uh, the board agrees with our recommendation and changes in district tuition to by three dollars a credit hour to hundred and eleven dollars again that's on there but all of the other community colleges are 2023 rates uh, as you saw on the previous slide they are number of them are contemplating and are considering increases those who didn't respond also are considering but they didn't fill out the information for when we were at the McBoa conference back uh, two weeks ago out of district, the same thing. We're currently at 188 uh, at 23. Uh, the increase would take us up to 194, which is a, a six dollar a six dollar per credit hour increase. And then the out of state, uh, where we are 11th, and the comparison for uh, going forward for a recommendation for 2024. Uh, the increase last year <coughs> averaged right around 2.4 percent in district, 2.5 for uh, out of district, and 1.7. You can see what the average tuition rate is for 2023 at, at 127.30, and uh, to do a right to a smack dab at Kellogg from the in district at 14, you're right smack dab in, in the middle for that uh, for that average. So those show where we're at today and uh, where we would be should uh, an increase uh, be approved uh, for the coming 2024 year. The next uh, page uh, is some information that Trustee Mose have asked about uh, last year and we combined tuition and fees to show uh, where Henry Ford stood uh, when you consider everything uh, for students. Uh, so for the in-district tuition and fees, we're in blue across the, across the top, and there are uh, eight community colleges that have a lower total package for in-district students than what uh, Henry Ford does. We're at 4180, and the average at the bottom we see is 4562. Uh, out of district, the average is 7089, and there are uh, nine that are 
a uh, little lower than, than what we're at. We're at uh, uh, 65, 65.80. So again, these aren't helping much any, <laughs> as we can see. And then the out of, out of state, which isn't much different than the previous slide that I showed, because we do have a higher out of state tuition rate than uh, uh, our comparable uh, colleges. What we did put on here was show, okay, here's where we stand tuition wise, but where do we stand when it comes to revenue per student, per full time student for property taxes? And that's been something that I'm probably not telling much, uh, uh, most of you about uh, is new, new to you, but we're just under $2,000 per student when you take a, a full time student compared to our uh, com uh, competitors colleagues call them what you will with an average of sixty four hundred sixty four hundred dollars per uh, full-time equivalent for everybody so the college uh, we're forty five hundred dollars lower per student for property taxes than our other 27 colleagues are the, the issue here is that we can't do much about that at this particular point we have a small state equalized value for, for our district, uh, and we're 70% below the average, and we're levying four mills. Uh, I believe there's only one other district that levies four mills, uh, and most of the folks here, as you can see, are levy two mills, two and a half, three, because they have much more larger state equalized value for their district than what, than, than what we have. So what I've done on the last three columns, uh, Tuition, in-district, and property taxes added that together uh, across the board for in-district, out-of-district, and out-of-state. The blue line shows what our combined it, uh, is. We're still last in every category and second to last in out-of-state. Only uh, Lake Michigan is lower than we are when you look at the out-of-state when you combine tuition with, with property taxes. So uh, that's just uh, some information. I, don't I believe most of Mason, but I thought we'd go over this uh, one more time. The next uh, slide shows the sustainable budget from 2023 through 2026. Uh, the 23 budget was our, is our current year. We're currently budgeted at a small surplus of $363,000. 2024, with this recommended tuition increase, state appropriations, uh, property taxes, et cetera, and uh, a total of 175 full-time faculty members. You can see that under the tuition increase, $3 in district, $6 out of district, and $8 out of state. Those are the numbers that we talked about back in January and back in December when we were uh, negotiating and presenting uh, potential packages to you for, for consideration. Uh, as you can see, the, same, the numbers for 25 and 26 are uh, lower in terms of tuition. Again, those are the numbers we used in, in this calculation. And uh, the bottom line is there's a small surplus in both 24, 25, uh, a small projected deficit in 26, but that's two years away and we certainly will have time to work on that to, to correct that situation. Uh, and then attachment, this attachment here, part of attachment one shows the in-district rate, what the change would be to the uh, rates for 2024, 2.8% in district, 3.2 out of district, and 2.9% out of state. And bear with me, this last one is kind of small, <laughs> but it goes all the way back to 1971 with, with tuition, so I'll concentrate on the, on the bottom. The recommended for 2024, as you can see, we have the inflation, ra inflation rate in there. The in district rate of 111, the out of district rate of 190, Four and then the out-of-state rate. Uh, we've looked at the inflation rate over the pr past 10 years. You can see the last two years were upwards of over 6% for both 23 and 24. Uh, the average for the in-district, out-of-district and inflation is, is, is pretty close uh, to the, um, in, in terms of the rates. It's up and down, as you can see, from some of the various years, but on average over the last 10 years, things have uh, been, uh, keeping up with inflation and close to the inflation inflation rate. Uh, so with that, uh, again, going back one page, the recommendation is to uh, increase 
in district tuition by 2.8 percent out of district 3.2 percent and out of state by 2.9 questions questions for mr. Sikowski So I would have a couple of questions then. Okay, um, sure. The last one with incredibly small type. Yes. What you're saying is that over the last 10 years, the average inflation rate is 2.6%. Yes. Our average increase to in-district tuition is 2.5%, and our average increase to out-of-district uh, out out of is 2.7%. Yes. Okay. And then one other question, going back to the first sheet that you shared about the expected increases from some of these schools. Yes. In the comments, a couple of them say state cap 4.5%. Yes. When we were at the uh, McBoa conference, uh, this is what was being considered. But at that time, that's when the, the governor's budget came out with a tuition cap of, I believe, 4.5% is what it was. So a number of them are contemplating an increase over 4.5% prior to the uh, governor, Governor Whitmer, introducing her budget for the coming year. Okay. So the state then is saying that you can't increase more than 4.5% this, this coming That's year. what her recommendation is, yes. Okay. If I might, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Um, the university system in the state of Michigan has had what we call tuition restraint. That's kind of a euphemistic way to say tuition caps uh, for at least five years, and it may be 15 years. When you were at UT, did you got? Did, uh, no, that was a different state. Um, Ohio, <clears throat> it's been a while. It was, but it's been in Ohio for 15 years. Minimum. Okay. So, but but the community college system has been pretty successful in resisting tuition restraints, um, and this is now the second year in a row it's been proposed at least by some entity, whether it be the governor, the House, or the Senate. And uh, you'll recall that when, when we all met at uh, Dr. Maleko's uh, Administrative Services Building, we were talking about how this is something that could be coming. Um, I will say that the Michigan Community College Association has, has been pretty vocal in opposing tuition restraint. The university system, which is um, their analog to MCCA, is is very very strongly um, opposed to it but they they've already kind of let that one go they, they've been dealing with tuition restraint for a while so um, it's yet to be seen mr. chairman about whether the executive recommendation from the governor's office that includes tuition restraint whether it will make it all the way I, I will say that um, mr. Sadkowski the executive recommendation includes a what a four percent continuing increase for state of probes yes it does yeah. but based on that uh, our share would be 4.2 percent yeah so so mr. chairman my worry is uh, trying to get both the good and not get the bad in other words we like the four percent proposed increase but we're complaining about a tuition restraint also the good news is this board has never come close to for 4.5 percent I think what three years ago John how high did we get 4.2 I believe yeah. is what yeah 4.2 and that was because we came after a zero yes so that's yeah. some context to your question yeah. Mr. Chairman well actually looking further back you can see there were some big increases in like 2015 2016 but again you had some years where it was zero for zero. a few years before yeah. so it was more of a probably a catch-up yeah. than anything else before my time sorry it's okay <laughs> additional questions for mr. Sikowski on this item this would be coming up as a board action item in April correct yes all right if there's additional questions after the meeting feel free to reach out to president Cavaluna who I'm sure will reach out to mr. Sikowski to uh, get back to you with anything. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Board. Next item, please. Action item, citizen participation. Citizens wishing to address the Board on agenda and non-agenda items for action who have submitted a blue card by 7, 10 p.m. to the Secretary may speak at this time. 
The board may not be in a position to respond to non-agenda items, therefore speakers should not anticipate an immediate response to their comments or questions. For the benefit of all concerned, do not mention the names of students or college employees. Please limit comments to three minutes. If during those three minutes the comments become personally directed, abusive, obscene, or irrelevant, your public comment time may be interrupted or ended. There are no public, uh, no blue cards. All right, next item. Uh, next item, <clears throat> uh, action item to approve action items. Uh, move to approve action items numbered one through six as recommended in this agenda. So moved. Support. Moved by Trustee Mosip, supported by Trustee Petlichkoff. Are there any questions on any of the action items? Anything that we would want to pull for a separate vote? Trustee Barry. Six, does that need a separate uh, roll it, call? It needs that, a roll that call. One will. Thank you. Besides that, any questions, comments on any of the action items? All right. Um, Trustee Watts, if you want, then want to read the recommended action item. Or redo it since we're going to do a separate. We're pulling six for yeah. separate votes. So it'll be one through five. Okay. Uh, so number one, recommended action, move to approve a contract award to Lardell. No. I'm sorry. Just read. Just read. The action, what you read before. Say one through oh, I'm five. sorry. The I'm sorry. Standard. I apologize. Okay. Move to approve action items numbered one through five. One through five is recommended in this agenda, except for we, six. And we, we already have the motion and the support, so we could please do a yes. roll call. Trustee Berry? Yes. Trustee D'Ambrosio? Yes. Trustee McDonald? Yes. Trustee Mozip? Yes. Trustee Petrikoff? Yes. Trustee Watts? Yes. Chair Thorpe? Yes. All right, now going back to action item number six. Move to enter into closed session to consider security planning to address or prevent potential threats to the safety of the students and staff pursuant to MCL 15.268. So moved. Support. Moved by Trustee McDonald. I'll say support by Trustee Petlichkoff. Uh, we're not going to break for closed session until we're done with all the other business. So just be aware of that one. Can we please get a roll call? Trustee Berry? Yes. Trustee D'Ambrosio? Yes. Trustee McDonald? Yes. Trustee Mosip? Yes. Trustee Petrikoff? Yes. Trustee Watts? Yes. Chair Thorpe? Yes. Next item, please. Board of Trustees Business, Acknowledgements of Correspondence. I have no idea. I mean, sometimes these months fly by and it's tough to keep straight. What do we see coming from one side of Michigan Avenue versus the other, as Trustee Barry would put it? Um, I know we got an email earlier today um, regarding um, uh, SSA uh, that was, was shared with us, um, but I don't know that there's anything else really. Anyone else have anything? All right, next item. Board committee reports. Um, I'll just continue. Policy met today earlier. Um, we went over a couple of items. Um, one was the discussion regarding the operating manual. Um, that'll be something that um, uh, Mrs. Clark went through and cleaned up. Um, we're going to add some items to the operating manual that speak to the various definitions of bylaw, policy, guidelines so the operating manual the way we see it is more of a summary perhaps that board members would be able to have um, that would also be part of board orientation um, so once we uh, look at it a few times or mrs clark will give it back to us once it's cleaned up a little bit we'll look at it see what things need to be added removed um, and then we'll bring it to the full board but if you guys have suggestions as well that will be emailed um, once policy has looked at it um, some of the other things that was suggested was perhaps put a page in there with all of the various academic acronyms that we are so used to or not used to within the P-12 and the college. So it would be one that encompasses both P-12 and the college. Um, the second thing was that we we're going to get an update from our legal uh, Dickinson to see what sort of progress they're making with the policies. That was something that we started last year. Um, and just get an update as to what percentage we've kind of tackled all of those policies that they're looking through. And the third, um, looking at the conflict of interest and also um, conflict of commitment. So just more discussion as to what that looks like. 
a little bit more in depth than what we originally thought. So anything is, else to add? I'm sorry. Is that along the lines of what we had discussed at the uh, during the P12 study session? This conflict of interest um, was no, it was not in the study session. Okay. It was left. It was remaining from last year's okay. um, college session. All right. The policy. Was there anything else that I missed that we? And there were actually four other um, policies that we went through. Um, it was, I don't have, do you have it in front of you, Trustee Barry? I have it on my phone. And there were four policies that were reviewed. Yes, uh, HFC Foundation, Trust and Agency Fund, the audit policy, uh -huh. Systems of counting policy. Yeah, those were the four just simple cleanup. Yep. Yeah. So thank you for having those. All right. Sure. Thank you. Any other committee reports? One that I'll mention because we won't have a chance to have another meeting before it happens is Trustee Palachkoff sent something out to us about a meeting that we'll do with the city. Trustee Palachkoff, is that April 5th? April 5th, city relations. I was going to bring that up under just okay. information, but that's fine. Um, okay. I did send out to everybody if anybody has anything you want to add to the agenda or have us take a look at. This is a um, committee that involves both the um, city, the school district, the P-12, and the college, and we always have representation from all three entities, and usually conversation also, so feel free uh, about anything that you think is relative to collaborating with the city. Um, we we have those discussions at that time and it's more of a think tank kind of um committee thank you any additional committees next item request for information and or future agenda items i had forwarded oh sorry go on trustee barry president cataluna was mentioned earlier by our student uh, the, uh, regarding scholarships uh, spoke about this earlier if we can get us just a simple report on updates and you know on our scholarships and you know how many are being claimed I understand that we're doing a great job since you know before but uh, just a simple update please yes I, I would ask to maybe expand on it because we've got it on two ends we've got the students that are coming into us but then also our students that are continuing on to a four-year and maybe what we're doing to help on both sides of it that's that's what I was going yeah. to ask is that okay. this gentleman needed right. help on finding it moving right forward not not what we have to offer uh, one additional item that I had sent over to President Cavaluna I think I had seen in something we got from ACCT about uh, the idea that I think at the state level they're looking to expand uh, child care on campus uh, and making it something that's available so I send it over to him just said how will that impact us since we've got a child care center here on campus so just let us know what you find out about that one okay any additional requests for information or future agenda trustee Moser yeah I, I pairing uh, Dia talking about his involvement with student council and the um, gaming club uh, I'd like to, to get a quick report on student activities uh, post-COVID um, as it came back to normal numbers um, and how's that going and what are we doing to encourage student uh, involvement in extracurricular activities? I can um, work on all three of those and then I can work with the chair about the method for reporting out whether it's here uh, in direct communication with you all or both. Thank you. Anything else on that? Next item. Board member commentary. Trustee McDonald. I'm very excited to see that the Women's Recognition Luncheon is coming back um, after not being in person since 2009. So I just encourage everyone, uh, if you haven't bought your tickets, please go ahead and do so. There are also other ways that you can support um, the event uh, there are um, raffle tickets going around um, so there's many people that are selling those if you'd like 
just look into it. Uh, all the support goes to um, the um, student outreach and support. So a uh, real worthy cause to help our students uh, maintain can, their. Can you remind us when is that luncheon again? I, off the top of my head, the 31st. Yeah. Is that right? It is the yeah. 31st, 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock. And so, and if, uh, not that I want to uh, take away from anyone else, but I do have tickets myself if you want to, <laughs> to purchase any. They're $5 and there's a chance to win 500 But again, please come and come early because there's a lot of uh, raffle prizes as well. Any other board members have any commentary? President Cavaluna? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I've been your teammate for a little under five years, and today the board has taken action uh, on an, uh, an action item that I've never been with you all, and that was the naming of two different physical properties. And so I, I want to congratulate you all, but also make comments to uh, any of the individuals in, who are at your audience today about these. And um, of course, the first is the, um, the band room, which is in the F building, F110. Uh, you all have unanimously decided to name that the Rick L. Goward uh, band room. And I, I didn't see, but I could, uh, is there, yes, are there any? She is. Yes. Um, uh, I, I apologize. I don't know um, uh, the person that's just been identified. Andy, um, his wife. Okay. Uh, that's Mr. Goward's wife. And I, can, I speak on behalf of the entire board and the college. Congratulations and uh, condolences and uh, celebration for um, many decades of, of great service that um, this board has shown its testament to that in a unanimous vote for a naming opportunity and I um, I congratulate you and and the memory of, of Rick the second item that you all uh, named unanimously today is uh, the student and culinary arts center which will be named the John McDonald student and culinary arts center and that was where I saw Dia, uh, I think it was two or three weeks ago when he was thinking whether he needed my help to get into U of M. Um, and um, you all uh, no doubt know the legacy of John McDonald. And uh, I do see his, his wife and his very, very good friend, um, Denise McDonald and David Hecker. Um, there may be others in, uh, that are with you there. Um, they're, they're here to, to watch this board review and then unanimously support the naming. But on behalf of the college and the board, I do say to you all also, I, I hope this is um, something that, that feels good, but also gives life to the memory of John McDonald. And um, I, I, I think the timing is fitting with a, a holiday that we just recently celebrated uh, that I'm sure um, the only fit, more fitting time where somehow the, the St. Patrick's Day could have fallen on a, on a board meeting. Um, but uh, I, I worked very closely with John McDonald, President McDonald, and um, it, is, it is no doubt that we had many things we worked on very, very well together and were right in alignment, and there were some times we didn't dis uh, agree. But I can tell you one thing that was deep to his soul and that was uh, always at the forefront of his mind, and that was that this institution provided an opportunity for a better life because of the students it served. And um, I know that those that know him well and the best work we did together between myself and him were centered around those things. So I think it's very appropriate that this board unanimously supports the naming of the Student Center. And I hope uh, Mrs. McDonald and Dr. Hecker and Dr. Rader and Mr. Bazzi and everyone else who was, uh, who was a friend or a colleague or uh, a teammate, and I count myself in some of those circles, that this is a testament to the man that John McDonald was and the teammate that he was at Henry Ford College. And because this is the first time that I've been uh, with you all when this has happened, I will tell you, uh, trustees, that I'll be working with you to commemorate these namings in the appropriate way, which will be a first for me. And uh, I will, of course, involve um, discussions with the people who are here to watch what you did. And I, um, I'll make sure you have an opportunity to be around them as we commemorate what you've uh, unanimously approved today. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think it's very fitting that you mentioned that it's right by St. Patrick's Day, and John always loved a good St. Patrick's Day party. He put him on for years for the Rotary Club. Uh, but the timing is also uh, interesting, as you mentioned, the Rotary fundraiser, which 
Rick Goward was, was the mind behind it when we started planning it a year and a half ago. Uh, so a very fitting time-wise uh, that this is happening right now. Trustee well, Pelishkoff? Th that was some of what I was going to refer to as well. And um, I, I'm the more senior member on this board. I started here in 2008. And um, I had to run the gauntlet with uh, Mr. McDonald <laughs> to, to find my way to this chair. Um, and then Rick, I, I, I quickly learned, was quite a um, captivating um, and entertaining um, member of this college community and was, uh, I think we were very blessed to have um, such strong personalities to speak on behalf of the college. I always appreciated with their um, personalities uh, promoting this institution and they have been greatly missed and we really are thankful that we are able to show that appreciation in this manner. Next item please. Future meeting dates Tuesday March 21 2023 P12 board study session 5 30 p.m. at the Administrative Service Center in the Frank Banshee Boardroom. Monday, April 10th, 2023, P12 Policy Committee Meeting, 5 p.m. at the Administrative Service Center in the Superintendent's Conference Room. Monday, April 10th, 2023, P12 Finance Committee Meeting, 6 p.m. at the Administrative Service Center in the Superintendent's Conference Room. Monday, April 10th, 2023, P12 Board of Education Meeting, 7 p.m. at the Administrative Service Center in the Frank Franchi Boardroom. Monday, April 17th, 2023, HFC Board of Trustees Policy Meeting, 6 p.m. at the Administrative Service Services and Conference Center in the Cabinet Conference Room, and Monday, April 17th, 2023, HFC Board of Trustees Meeting, 7 p.m. at the Administrative Services and Conference Center in the Rosenau Boardroom. We will not be adjourning since we're going into a closed session, but we've completed all regular business, so do not feel the need to hang around. <laughs> if we don't see you, take care of yourselves. We'll see you next month. And we are adjourned. <laughs> All right. Good night, everybody.